All right, an update on this uh, cotton picking uh, 99V. Um, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, there's a there's a segment out on this display. That's I'll troubleshoot that later. That's pretty minor, but you can see that the frequency counter is is I don't know. It's way up there, but the thing is, it doesn't follow the channel changing. See, it still doesn't work. But there's a huge difference. The display was all jacked up with um, segments out and flickering and all kinds of stuff. So <clears throat> the problem starts over here. You key the mic up, and it makes a whole bunch of things happen at the same time. And the flaw was right in here. And it's actually on the this integrated circuit right here. It's an 8-pin dip. Well, it turns out um, that the CB radios and ham radios are mostly run on 8 volts. And the 8 volt trace goes all the way around to this side. Of course, right? The problem is actually on the other side. <clears throat> See if I can even, I don't even know if I can focus it. You see that little bit of solder right there on that trace I don't I doubt you can see it in this video but I'll, I'll point it out to you there's a crack here and here across the board the board is cracked and it cracked that trace in half the problem is with the naked eye I couldn't see it at all and then I put it under the microscope under low power I still couldn't see it I didn't know where the crack was I put it on high power and I finally found it it was unbelievably tiny but this is the 8 volt trace that supplies power to the PLL, which has everything to do with channels, right? <clears throat> so for right now, I've put a piece of solder, I soldered across it, and I'll run a piece of uh, wire on there. So, because uh, once the board, the substrate is cracked, it won't, um, it won't be as mechanically stable. And that both sides of that break can shift around, so I'll, I'll fix that. Uh, better later, but for getting this troubleshooting going right now, uh, the solder's fine. You can hardly see it, but it's really, really thick, and so it should be strong enough to get the troubleshooting done. But anyway, so naturally, that didn't fix everything, right? Because, you know, the, the frequency counter is still, um, it's way off and it doesn't follow. <clears throat> well, on the schematic, Part of what's still wrong is the crystal right here, 10.24 megahertz, uh, goes into pin 3. What's also supposed to happen, and I do believe it's pin, pin 2, is supposed to also have 4 megahertz on it. And it gets that from there's a can on here, a tunable can. Now remember, the schematics have been sabotaged by the manufacturer on purpose, bastards. So <clears throat> anyway, um, there's supposed to be two pins with high frequency on them. One's got, you know, here's the crystal, 10.24, and then another, I think it was either pin 2 or pin 4, had 4 megahertz on it. And one of the RF cans that people, you know, go in and screw around with, that's what helps tune in the 4 megahertz, so I gotta go trace that down. So, part of the success of this was not focusing on the schematic. I used, um, <clears throat> it's impossible to read, but these are all test points, what the voltages are supposed to be under transmit and receive conditions. So, I already knew the problem was in this area, and the transistors were not operating as they should and that verified what I already knew yay but what it did was it kinda of backed me away from using the schematic because the schematics jacked up on purpose I'm not kidding I got this from a really good source so and that's what's taken me so long to get this trouble shot so anyway at least the display is functional the freak display is functional and um, I've just got to keep finding out why the um, PLL chip isn't fully operational yet. 
So that's what's coming next. This has been a week just on this unit. <clears throat> Not much time, probably half an hour a day. It's about all I'm good for these days. But anyway, um, the other one that was not working, that is working, somebody's been inside of it a little bit. See the background LED just keeps changing colors all by itself. I mean, isn't that special? I think that's what those wires are right there, because those aren't factory. <clears throat> but anyway, this radio works fine. It didn't, but it does now. So that's one down. And now I'm working on by far the worst one. And um, it's getting there. It's getting there. So yes, I've played with the clarifier and everything and it changes nothing. So anyway, um, it's not going to work until the PIL is fully functional. But uh, that's coming. We'll get there. As long as nothing's burned out, I'll get there. Otherwise, i got to pull the chip and rip a, rip a good chip out of something else. So... Um, Anyway, some of these radios have been abused, and that's why they don't work good. But uh, we'll get there. Anyway, that's it. See you. Bye.